Hey, welcome to a new vlog. It's Emma. I mean, it's still Emma. Who else is it gonna be? That would be a little scary. Um, I have a lot of things to show you, but I just wanted to say hi. The weather has been absolutely like beautiful, but even my hands are sweaty and I have the air on, <laughs> which you can probably hear um, because it is so hot. It is, I think it feels like 30, um, which is very warm for May. And as you guys know, it was just snowing a couple of weeks ago. I'm more excited actually right now to introduce you to a few new members of the family um that i bought the other day okay so first of all we have this absolute gorgeous beauty that i'm just obsessed with i love him he feels so nice and cool like he's so nice to touch i just want to like squeeze it um for right now he's just sitting on the shelf on one of these shelves which hold all my books i went to the plant store with my mom we actually went twice like look at look at all the little oh i'm just so happy about him and then my little snail guy is here with him my family and i went out to two different garden centers because my parents have been redoing um their front garden and i was only intending to get some balcony plants because you guys know i wanted to start a garden this spring out there and i did but then we went back to another place uh, the day later and then I got a whole bunch of house plants as well, which was not part of the plan They just had some really cool ones because we went to a new nursery So I picked those guys up, but let me show you the other ones too. Okay, so first up we have this umbelotta I believe he's called he's just sitting here right next to my sink, but I just think he's also So pretty probably the one I'm most excited to show you is This this beautiful gorgeous this beautiful gorgeous woman i believe this is called dichondra is its proper name but it's also known as silver falls these are so soft i cannot describe to you i mean they look really soft on camera so that's amazing um but i cannot describe to you how soft the leaves are and then if you look up if we can find any he does have little white flowers in here somewhere oh yeah <gasps> right there <laughs> I just think he's absolutely wonderful. And then I'm gonna take you out on the balcony because the tiny tomato, the tiny tomato farm has started back up and we do offer more than just tomatoes this year. If you guys have been around since last year when I just made myself so happy growing tiny tomatoes, then hello, it's been nice having you here all year. <laughs>
Okay, so I've never been able to capture him on film before for you guys, but not the black one, the gray one there is, is one eye <laughs> because he only has one eye. Oh, for months I, sorry, you can have one too. For months I thought I lost him because we didn't see him all winter, but hi, baby. <gasps> hi, old one eye. Wanna come say hi? Yes, do you wanna show everyone? You are still gorgeous. It's okay. There you go. Yeah, you got it. Good morning. So it's another very warm day, but I did want to tell you guys my reading updates because we have three books on the go this week. We have an audiobook, book club pick, and then a book that I've been reading for a while, but I do want to start something else as well. Um, so first, let's just talk about this because I started The Body Keeps the Score a while ago. You guys know I've been meaning to pick this one up for a while. I bought it for myself this year. This has been like one of my goals for the year actually is to read this book and I did start, I don't even know when, over a month ago now. I'm 88 pages through. I'm taking it really slowly. I think for me, I absolutely need to take this very slowly. This book is a lot. Um, some days I know that like I absolutely cannot pick it up. It is a ton of information, amazing, valuable information. I've also been journaling along with it. I was just reading outside. Um, I try to read a chapter every once in a while just when I'm feeling ready for it because this, oh my God, it's just so well-researched. It tells you so much about yourself. Every time I pick it up, I learn something new or something just clicks into place for me. And I'm like, that, that is, that is it, that is it. And it just makes so much sense. In a way, it's comforting to know um, scientifically what's going on in your brain because the body keeps the score is about um, trauma, PTSD, brain injury, any kind of trauma, um, but it's also about healing trauma and, uh, and about the relationship between the body and the mind in trauma. This is actually so good and I wish I would have read it when I was taking that literature course that I took that just ended, which was about trauma in literature because basically what we were discussing in literature and like looking at trauma and PTSD even and other things like that are being discussed in this book in the exact same way just with obviously scientific explanations instead of literary explanations and explorations and theories and stuff like that so this would have been so helpful and it's really cool to after taking that course see a lot of the things we were talking about in this book so this is by Bessel van der Kolk. I put this off for a while picking it up just because it is scary to learn new things about yourself. Well, not new things. It's scary to put a name to things, to have an explanation for things. Um, and a lot of the time when I am reading it, like I can sense my chest getting very tight. Um, and it is a little bit hard to read sometimes when I read it. So I just make sure to take it really, really slow. That's what I would recommend if you're interested in picking this up, but I think it is incredible. So worth it. It is so fantastic. There's so much information. It is such a great resource. And um, I'm just so happy I bought this. So that is the first one. This next book is for Dickens versus Tolstoy. So that is the old curiosity shop. I did start this one physically, but then I wasn't really getting into it. So I picked up the audiobook on YouTube. There's actually just a free audiobook of this on YouTube, which is great. I think the R, the R rater, <laughs> I think the narrator does a great job. So I'm 122 pages through. I'm on chapter 15. The old curiosity shop by Dickens is a read for May and June. And it's about little Nell, who is a young girl who lives with her grandfather, who runs a a curiosity shop full of bizarre things it's like this weird thrift store filled with antiques and just the most ridiculous amazing finds they are being hounded both by Nell's brother Fred um, who's, not, who's a little bit estranged from them and also by other money lenders who believe that her grandfather has a huge fortune that he's like hiding away and he's only gonna give it to Nell because they have like a great relationship with each other but obviously Fred wants it and people who know the grandfather want his fortune um, and so they're constantly just being like attacked and hounded and visited and eventually Nell and her grandfather make a plan with each other to run away to the countryside so that's kind of where i'm at right now they've just left 
London, I believe, so we'll see how this goes. I'm not really into it yet. And then the audiobook I picked up was City of Brass by S.A. Chakrabarty. This is on my May TBR. I've had this book for so long and I've yet to pick it up, but I'm making a really decent way through. I am 174. Uh, 174 pages through and I'm not liking it so far. I don't have anything in this book. I haven't put any eggs in the basket of this book. I don't have any... I don't have any attachments to it. I don't have any attachments to the characters. The audiobook is okay, but there is so much information just dumped in this book. Like, there is a ton of information, and it's not even just... Well, like, it is kind of all at once, but it's almost in every chapter. There's more and more information just kind of plopped. The basis of this, though, is that we're following Nari, who is a con artist, and she lives in 18th century Cairo, and she doesn't really believe in magic, but she does have these weird abilities that no one else has, but then one day she accidentally summons a djinn by accident, and and he's like, yo, you do have abilities. When are you going to admit this? And so they kind of go on this adventure together to the city of Brass. And we also follow the perspective of another man named Ali, who is, is he, I don't know, he's part of the royal family in the city of Brass or Devabad. I actually am really unsure if this is young adult fantasy or adult fantasy because I thought it was adult fantasy, but it is reading really, really young. The writing is striking me as very young adults and just it's not great right now the characters or the plot or the information the writing none of it is capturing my attention so i don't know i am a decent way through but i still have a long way to go i don't think i'm gonna dnf this if you've read the city of brass i had really high hopes for this one it is also so gorgeous um please let me know what you think because i've heard that this series so many people just love it so if you have read city of brass and it gets better please let me know but i'm not enjoying it right now school has also started my american lit classes have also started so i'm actually gonna go work on that right now i'm gonna work on it outside i've just been a balcony longer so i'll talk to you guys about the course and what we've been reading in a little bit but for right now i need to go finish my readings and the notes for that and there's already an essay due in a week so yeah Good morning. So my desk is very messy, so I'm just going to clean it while I talk to you guys. I have to leave in about half an hour. I'm actually going out for a picnic with my friends, which should be really fun. But I've also been working on my school stuff. So, well, no, I'm not technically done the first week because I still haven't finished my readings, but today's Saturday. Um, but everything is in pretty much the Norton anthology, although I did order a few novels that aren't in there and then this is my notebook <laughs> for this summer semester for this course i really really like it i don't even know where i got this as you can see it's only been a few days and so i started on monday and essentially i made a calendar so that um i'm just going to be reading like a work a day almost at least for the short ones because the first week definitely started with works that i could just read in a day they were pretty short which was nice this is the outfit <laughs> we have carolyn's tote bag this dress, I don't even know where this is from. This is thrifted from ThreadUp. Um, these are my prescription sunglasses from <laughs> Glasses USA. And then I think these sandals, I've had these since high school. I feel like they might potentially be from Walmart, but um, I might, oh, I have a big floppy hat. Where is actually my big floppy hat? I don't even know if it's here. I might have left it at my parents when I moved. Um, Is this ridiculous or do I just wear it? It does help with the sun. It is practical. Also, one last reading update before I go. I started Pedro Paramo and wow, I'm so glad I picked this up. I was meaning to read this in April um, and then I didn't get around to it because you guys voted on something else, but I've been meaning to read this for so long and it is like, it's gonna be five stars, I believe. I'm only 42 pages through, but it is just so phenomenal. Like I'm having the best time of my life with this one. How do I describe it to you? So like. It's about this man who goes to a small town in search of his father, who is Pedro Paramo. But when he gets there, things are not what they seem at all. I don't want to spoil anything. It's definitely magical realism. Um, this book inspired people like Gabriel Garcia Marquez and stuff like that. But it is reminding me so much. Like uh, what I'm picturing when I read this book is Spirited Away. 
um, and specifically the scenes in Spirited Away with like <laughs> the the ghost town I guess parts because this book takes the meaning of ghost town to like a whole new level it is just fantastic it's doing so many things but that's literally what I'm picturing when I'm reading this book is those scenes in Spirited Away um, during the daytime when there's just like this weird emptiness but you can feel that something is off and then when the sun goes down things start to kind of come out and it's just so cool like I just have the movie in my mind when I'm reading this book is what I'm picturing but it's just so phenomenal um maybe there's like a quote that I can put it yeah there is a quote that I can put it better um it says the town is filled with echoes it's like they were trapped behind the walls or beneath the cobblestones when you walk you feel like someone's behind you stepping in your footsteps you hear rustlings and people laughing Laughter that sounds used up and voices worn away by the years sounds like that. But I think the day will come when those sounds fade away. It's just so cool. So this guy gets to the town and eventually he starts to meet all of these people. Um, and that's all I'm gonna say. It's just so, so good. Like, I just wanna read this right now. I might try and squeeze in a few more pages before my friends get here. I might even bring this with me. Um, I might just bring it with me. Let's just bring it with me because I feel like you should always have a book with you, but Peter Promo, highly recommend. It's gonna be five stars, one of my favorite reads of the year. I'm so happy that I'm reading it. Then scrunch smaller sections of the fabric together randomly. And, and tie it off? Keep scrunching and folding, gathering all the fabric into a relatively flat, tight disc. The tighter you scrunch it, the more white areas there will be in the final shape. So could you do like this? And then tie it here? Tie, tie it, it together? <laughs> Are my 
you did not do this. You guys do absolutely too much. Look at this. How did you even create this? Did you make this yourself? This is a print of all my favorite books. You did not. I'm actually crying. Wow, I'm gonna frame this. Hi, welcome to a new day. I have had the busiest weekend I've had in so long and I am so exhausted. Where do I even begin? I have so much to tell you. Um, I think, when did I last update you? I feel like I might've last updated you when I was going on, let me just close this. When I was going on a picnic with my friends, which was really great because basically one of my best friends um, is home from Vancouver where she lives. She's here for a few more days. I think she leaves in a couple days now, but we've just been spending as much time as possible with her, our, our friend group. We've all been friends since we were three years old, five years old um, with each other. So we're basically we're just they're just my sisters i've never had which is amazing and it's been so nice for all five of us to be together and to do stuff again so we went on a picnic we've been swimming a lot because it's been so warm which is nice i love swimming so much i've missed it um and then what else did we do we had like a little kahoot night where kahoot is like a little online quiz you can kind of make my university uses it and like we used to do it in high school i think but we made cahoots on each other and then we um, all hung out here the other night and did our little cahoots. <laughs> it was like, how well do we know each other with like very obscure, like very obscure questions for like friends who've been friends for 20 plus years. Um, so that was really fun. And then the next day we went out to brunch, um, which was okay. The vegan options were not stellar, but the people were. Um, and then from there, we went back to their house and we did tie-dye shirts. I think, that, oh, that's the last thing you guys might have saw. We made tie-dye shirts together. I still have mine all wrapped up, so I think I'm going to open them up with you guys because I've been dying to see what they look like, but I've just been so busy today, which brings me to today, because then we made our tie-dye shirts and then we went swimming. I was actually going to pick up my camera yesterday. My friends offered to drive me to pick up my camera because I had put it on hold. I finally ordered it. I can't remember if I said that. My bank account cried a lot, but I'm just so ready to film on something better for you guys just to have a better camera other than my phone. So we went to pick it up, but unfortunately they had sold it because apparently it's the Sony, it's gonna be the Sony a7 IV um, is the one I had put on request, but apparently they're like very hot commodities and sell out immediately, even if you do request, like, you know, that they put it on hold for you. So anyway, they're gonna ship me another one from somewhere else in Ontario, which is nice of them. And then I did order a lens too. So those should be here, I wanna say, sometime this week. I'm really excited to show you guys and mess around with it. Then I finally came home. <laughs> And then my roommate was actually sick all night. He's still sick. He's been throwing up all night and I did not get, I got no sleep. Um, like, no, I don't think I've slept since last night. So I am just absolutely whew, so exhausted. I have the biggest headache. I'm already behind on my readings and where I need to be. And I have an essay due in four days that I haven't started. So um that's okay though because i just really wanted this weekend and most of this week dedicated to just seeing my friends again and spending as much quality time with them as possible so but my reading updates um i read more of pedro paramo and i love it so much i'm loving it more and more with every single page that i read i am almost done actually i'm 74 pages through and it's just been it's just been so phenomenal um i'm just loving it so much so that is that i cannot wait cannot wait to finish this and see how it ends because i feel like the ending is just going to be absolutely 
phenomenal. I think it's gonna knock my socks off. I'm currently sitting on my desk. Um, and then this, oh, I've not listened anymore to City of Brass. I'm just really not looking forward to picking it up or anything like that. So I don't know what I'm gonna end up doing. I got 224 pages in. Um, this book is a little over 500 pages though, and I just don't know if I want to continue, especially because I have things I'm more excited to get to in my audio holds that are in. So I don't know what to do. Um, I don't want to DNF it. I kind of want to see what happens. I know so many people love this series, but yeah, I don't know what I'll end up doing. I probably won't be done or I won't have decided if I'm actually going to DNF by the time you see this video. So please let me know what I should do. I'm just going to leave it up to you guys. Vote, do I DNF or not DNF? I don't know. Maybe I'll even post a poll on Instagram. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not great so that is the city of brass and then um i did a lot of my school readings today i think you guys saw so i started out with anne bradstreet um i finished the poetry we were supposed to read for her which were only two poems um i actually really liked the some of the lines in there and it was kind of beautiful so that was nice and then i'm also supposed to be reading mary rollinson today um i actually don't know who that is never heard of her and then who else is on the docket for today i have my calendar no i don't I don't even know. I don't even know who the next person is, but I think what I'm gonna do is go eat something, take um, an ibuprofen because I have a pounding headache. Uh, I really hope I'm not getting sick at all because I can't, I can't be sick right now. I have an essay to write. Um, and then what am I gonna do? I have an unboxing actually. I have a really fun unboxing to do with you guys too. So maybe we'll actually do that right now. Or maybe I'll just rest for a little bit first because my head is pounding. So. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and then I might read some more of this and just finish cleaning up the apartment because I'm just doing like, I'm just doing a nice clean, you know, after a night of Vomitron. <laughs> so I might listen to the old Curiosity Shop, I think, while I do that. I'll start with the old Curiosity Shop because I've only been reading 10 pages of it per day. Also not loving the old Curiosity Shop, but Dickens World, I feel like they're just so lulling to me now because um, I've been reading him consistently for, a year and a half now so it's just like very very nice to kind of get in the flow of it and the audiobook narrator like i said for the old curi old curiosity shop is phenomenal and it's just on youtube so i'd highly recommend checking it out and then if i finish those 10 pages cleaning maybe i'll start giving this more of a chance because between the two perspectives like we have nari and then we have ali who is um what is he he's some royal position but i'm really liking ali's perspective more actually and the more political um more political plotline of the book rather than Nari who is stuck with the Jin or the Deva that she has called and they've been like trying to get to Devabad, the city of brass, whereas Ali I feel like I'm just liking the political storyline more and like what's actually going on in the city even though it's still like way too much information and I have retained not very much of it. Um, which usually is not a problem for me at all with fantasy books or any books that try to introduce a ton of information even if it is just um information dropping everywhere that's usually not a problem for me to just be like okay that's fine but with this one i keep being like i just don't know so i don't know what that says about the book but um yeah so anyway let's go finish cleaning Hello again, it is me. I am here to close off the vlog with a little book unboxing because Unplugged Book Box sent me another one of their boxes to share with you guys, which is really fun and it just came so I thought we could open it together. This is gonna be a very delirious book box unboxing because I am so tired. <laughs> what even happened yesterday? I don't know. I was fine yesterday after the night of getting no sleep, but today it is just hitting me. It's already three o'clock and I've already had one hour nap but i think i need another like i'm someone who like if i don't get enough sleep i like can just not function for the life of me no matter what i do no matter how many coffees i have i've only had one coffee today so i might make another one honestly because um it's just ridiculous i just do not work as a human being um but i wanted to be awake to open this with you guys so that's what we're gonna try to do if none of this makes sense, uh, you will know why. I've been saving it for a video clip, and as well, there is a 
a link and a code, I believe, in the description box if you guys want to get yourself oh, um, an unplugged but box as well. <gasps> oh, I see something soft. <laughs> okay, one second. Oh my god, I think that's a rug. So for May, their theme is Endorphin Rush, and it is the adult fiction box. Okay, that's spoilers, I think. I'm just so- they literally fit- <gasps> is it a mat? <gasps> oh my god, it's a Bridgerton mat! <laughs> they fit a whole ass mat, a welcome mat. Okay, it is Bridgerton. I've not read Bridgerton, so here's the situation on Bridgerton, because people keep telling me to watch Bridgerton. I tried watching season one, hated it, cannot stand either of them and then i got i think almost all of the way through season two liked season two a whole lot better but i could only like i skipped through season two and only watched the scenes with kate and anthony because i can't take like i just can't take anyone else so much of that show makes me want to take my skin off <laughs> um and i didn't actually get to watch the last episode just because everyone else surrounding and different plot lines i just i couldn't do it like i hated it so much that i couldn't finish season two but i really liked kate and anthony next thing i am seeing i don't know what this is it's soap oh it's a bath bath soak this is the kiss quotient bath soap <gasps> oh this is tea okay so this is based off of a colleen hoover book and i've not read colleen hoover but i kind of want to do you think i would like colleen hoover Co colleen hoover yes or no and this is snow cone flavored cold brew tea and this is what it looks like. Oh. <gasps> Sugar scrub. Oh my god. And the scent is honeymoon in Hawaii, but it just smells like pineapple, mango amazingness. We have a gorgeous, beautiful spoon. And the spoon says, I don't know if you can see it. You probably can't. But it says, a stir away from a bruisey full day. I'm gonna open the books. First, oh my god, let's go with the polka dot one. This is Reputation by Lex Croucher. I've never heard of this. This is a different um, cover as well. I think the normal cover is blue. Bookish shelter, Georgiana Ellers is spending the summer with her aunt and uncle at their English countryside home. But then she meets the enigmatic Francis. It says if Bridgerton and Fleabag had a book baby. Oh, okay, this is the stand-in by where who's this by lily chu and it actually came with a signed card <gasps> i'm gonna stick it in here this one is about a famous actress i think she's in a limo and she pulls up beside our protagonist on the street and she's like hey we look alike she wants her to be her stand-in but the catch is that she will have to be escorted by sam the most attractive and infuriating man gracie's ever met ah look at them they're so pretty. Thank you so much to Unplugged Book Box for sending me that one. That's made my afternoon and kept me awake a little bit longer. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna close the vlog off here. I'm gonna go take a nap, probably, or have some tea. Um, and I will see you in my next vlog. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're doing fantastic. I don't know what I'm doing with this spoon, um, but I will see you very soon. So, ciao.